There we go. So welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for your patience and I appreciate you joining us this evening. This is Lori Verist, you can see me here. Um, as you could tell, we have Dr. Stephen Pfeiffer with us this evening and I'm excited. The name of his presentation is It's All Connected, Functional Medicine. Tonight you will learn in this webinar how to define good health, diseases of lifestyle, functional versus conventional medicine, and how functional medicine gets to the root cause. Before we get going though, there's something legal. I should cover the legal requirements to remind you that this is strictly an educational presentation on overall health and this information is not for diagnosing or treating conditions. I'd like to introduce and give you a little bit of background on, we refer to him as Dr. Steve. He graduated from Indiana School of Medicine um, and then he went on to have a family practice here in Fishers, Indiana, which he started in 1990. He's also served on boards. He's worked with food scientists to develop novel nutraceutical supplements that are still being marketed across many countries today. In, his, in this traditional medicine, medicine setting, he was a trusted advocate for innovative thinking and quality care. However, he slowly evolved his philosophy towards a more holistic, integrative, functional medicine approach. He realized that traditional treatments were valuable, but not, you know, they didn't really get to the root cause of conditions. So he began advanced training in holistic functional medicine circles, philosophies resulting in improved patient outcomes, created a passion to transition away from the, transition, the traditional medicine practices, towards a concierge integrative practice. In this new practice model, he's worked with other innovative physicians and naturopaths to develop protocols for Lyme disease and co-infections. The practice developed a reputation as an a center of excellence for complex medical conditions that had not responded optimally to the, the best traditional medical treatments available. Dr. Steve recently graduated also from the Trinity School of Natural Health and has joined Holistic Nutrition. We're so proud to have you, Steve. I like what he says. My mission is to provide a professional and honest approach to healthcare. So Steve, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you, Lori, for that great introduction. And I think that sums up uh, 30 years of efforts to improve people's health and uh, innovation. Can you see my slides? Sir, yes. Okay, good. Yes, I certainly am uh, most excited now by joining this team at Holistic Nutrition. Uh, and, you know, the training from Functional Medicine University and some of these thought leaders was absolutely phenomenal and uh, extended my knowledge base way beyond what you could accomplish through, you know, normal medical channels. So uh, this team is top notch and uh, their lectures are are quite innovative. So again, here's where we, we take a look at looking under the hood a little more carefully, looking for the root cause of what is causing someone's problems. Uh, you know, as a traditional physician, we were always taught to you know, find a diagnosis, put the patient's diagnosis in a box, and uh, use the prescription drugs that the insurance companies thought were properly, you know, were proper. And, you know, it, it, uh, it served a lot of people very well. But as, you know, uh, after, you know, five to 10 years of starting in practice, we started seeing all this myriad of bizarre symptom complexes like fibromyalgia, multiple chemical sensitivity syndrome, et cetera, that didn't fit in a nice box. So, and that's kind of what prompted me to start looking more carefully at, at functional medicine. And uh, this slide, I think, kind of summarizes that. So again, how do we define our, our optimal health? It's, it's not, you know, absence of disease, but we want to optimize our health and, uh, and live a high quality of life.
Well, what are the determinants of health? Uh, you know, it's absolutely important that you go and, and, and get a good physical exam every year. I still encourage everyone to get the mammograms, PSAs, blood tests. And, uh, you know, many times people will come back from their primary care physician with a very good report card. Everything's fine. You know, your cholesterol, liver, kidney, CBC are fine. But you know what? They don't really feel that well. And they're, they're not optimally well. So now we have to go look under the hood a little more carefully with our functional medicine testing platforms. Well, we all know about the standard American diet is, you know, we call it the sad diet. Uh, and uh, we all kind of know what to do better. But part of the, uh, you know, functional medicine university training and the holistic nutrition training protocols will be to actually help people really learn how to eat well. And of course, everybody knows about exercise and yoga and meditation, things like that. But uh, it, it's, it's really, you know, we, certainly in medical school, we were never trained about how to teach people how to eat properly. But uh, through working with Dr. Santizi and this team, uh, I've learned a lot in the last year about optimal uh, dieting. I think I kind of covered that pretty well about the difference between you know, a functional medicine approach. Um, we'll go into that in a couple more slides where we, we look at this more carefully. There's, there it is, that's the root cause uh, philosophy. You know, it's all, it's all connected as we say, it's a, a symphony of, of things. And uh, for example, you know, who would have ever thought that uh, all of your, your happy neurotransmitters, such as serotonin and dopamine, are not made in the brain, but you know, 85 to 90 percent of them are made in your gut. So we have to spend a lot of energy looking at leaky gut syndrome and uh, food sensitivities, and we'll get into that a little bit more here in a minute. And so the pillars of functional medicine is, is to, you know, when we're interviewing clients, uh, we're not really thinking too much about what disease is it, but we're kind of looking for these 10 common denominators of illness, you know, nutritional deficiencies, poor digestion, toxic bowel, sluggish liver, hypoglycemia, adrenal exhaustion, yeast overgrowth, all of these things need to be addressed as a kind of a, a symphony approach to turn things around. So how we approach the, the functional medicine approach is to do a very ex, uh, extensive health questionnaire. The holistic nutrition has a, a very detailed questionnaire that helps the health coach identify fairly quickly which one of these pillars is maybe unbalanced. Um, after that, this guides us into our uh, diagnostics lab testing, where we look very carefully for uh, nutritional deficiencies, uh, parasites in the in the bowel, uh, imbalanced, you know, dysbiotic situations, adrenal exhaustion, yeast overgrowth, and that's kind of how we like to approach it. So oxidative stress. Certainly, we live in a very toxic world nowadays. Uh, you know, yes, all the food and water has uh, a lot of chemicals. The, the EPA has certain limits that they set for safety, but uh, for each individual uh, toxin, but nobody's ever really analyzed the fact that there may be a hundred of these low level uh, oxidative stresses from phthalates to, you know, parabens in the food. And so we know that we have uh, technologies now to measure how this cumulative negative effect uh, will cause an oxidative stress. So, uh, and you know, we can measure even glutathione levels, mother nature's ultimate antioxidant and, uh, and optimize glutathione levels. Nutritional imbalances. Uh, there are very nice tests through the Sebexia platform 
that uh, measure intracellular levels of uh, vitamin D, calcium, uh, et cetera. And we all know that over 90% of the patients will, will find fairly profound nutritional imbalances from that standard American diet, SAD diet. And it's, then we can put people on a very personalized, customized nutritional protocol using, of course, um, pharmaceutical quality nutraceuticals. A lot of people will go to the health food store and, and, and kind of trust a clerk to, to guide them on things. But uh, the quality of these supplements may not be what you would like to see. So we have uh, relationships with so many of the uh, top notch, well-respected uh, nutritional supplement companies that uh, we can uh, you know, guide people into the highest quality possible. This is my next favorite topic is, of course, digestive and intestinal imbalances. And this could be certainly another one of our hour webinars soon to come from Holistic Nutrition. Um, we have a, a stool test uh, that we, we do. and. Uh, and we also do a food sensitivity panel. And you will find that the vast majority of the people have a condition called increased intestinal permeability or leaky gut syndrome. Our body has you know, a wonderful uh, setup with uh, you know, one cell uh, in the brush border of the small intestine that um, kind of guides kind of like the Panama Canal analogy where the food will just go through this, this um, pathway into the uh, lymph system, and uh, then we use our nutrition uh, ideally. So uh, there's a, a situation there called a gut-associated lymphoid tissue on the other side of that small intestine one cell membrane. And uh, what happens is we're taking in foods our body's never seen before, like uh, modified uh, gluten and uh, food sensitivities, and certainly there's so many things then that kind of damage that really delicate lining uh, It feeds the gut associated lymphoid tissue. So what then happens is if you have this leaky gut and toxins are coming in and, and food proteins that are not supposed to be there, then uh, you, you, your body kind of goes into a sense of a, of a panic attack uh, with a cytokine storm. And you probably have all been hearing a lot about cytokine storm now as uh, they talk about the coronavirus uh, creating that as well. So this is the, the root cause of many autoimmune conditions and, and fatigue, joint pain, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, et cetera. So very easy to address by looking at food sensitivities, uh, make, eliminating some of those foods for three to four months. And we, we like to use the well-known functional medicine um, description called the 4R protocol. Let's remove those toxins and yeast, glutens, and uh, then let's replace with digestive enzymes and healing nutrients for the stomach and small intestine. Let's re-inoculate with the healthy uh, you know, probiotic. And then for three months, we need to repair. And there's some very good supplements using glutamine and aloe, et cetera, that can repair that delicate lining and restore a very good GALT, gut associated lymphoid tissue. So that is a, a big part of what we do. So impaired detoxification is um, very common. We, we usually find a, a toxic burden with our testing. And we have uh, great supplements that turn on uh, the gallbladder to produce, we use ox bile and several B6 vitamins, NAC, glutathione, that help us improve our detoxification. You know, there's the phase one part of detoxification where toxins are and heavy metals are pulled out by our liver into the liver, but then the, their intermediates are actually more toxic than the original toxins themselves. So you need your phase two to package it up and send up the uh, toxins down through the bile and out of the body. So we, we have very uh, nice 
detox protocols that address both phase one and phase two. In regards to hormone and endocrine imbalances, they always joke that you're only as young as your hormones. And uh, we see uh, a lot of people having a need for uh, natural treatments, uh, not prescription ones, but natural ones that will improve your female hormones, your testosterone, uh, the, uh, thyroid certainly uh, is a big problem. A lot of people have impaired uh, T4 to T3 uh, thyroid conversion. So they, they have symptoms of low thyroid and maybe their tests are quote normal, but they need iodine or they'll need tyrosine to help convert that to a healthier uh, testosterone balance. Um, the big one, we had a nice seminar yesterday where we spent a good hour talking about uh, adrenal imbalance. So we, there's another hour talk we could go over, but I'll just, just highlight a couple thoughts there. You know, our body has this uh, communication system where the hypothalamus and pituitary send messages to the adrenals to produce cortisol. And we all need cortisol for stresses in life and, and things that happen. And so there's this sympathetic versus parasympathetic balance that uh, is critical to always look at, and we do with our tests. Um, you know, the sympathetic is the caveman analogy is if you have to run out and get food and you're getting chased by a woolly mammoth, you need your sympathetic. But then at the end of the day, you need to be able to come home and sit by the campfire and eat your food and rest and digest. That's, that's the parasympathetic. So there's very specific supplements that address uh, this delicate balance. Uh, such as ginseng, rhodiola, uh, uh, ashwagandha, and we have, uh, we, we try to find out where people are. You know, I, we, we like to ask them the questions, um, where are you at on the spectrum of your adrenal imbalance? Are you stressed and wired? Are you stressed and tired? Or are you burnt out and exhausted? And our questionnaire identifies that pretty well, but even the, the clients that we see, they can tell you right where they're at on that spectrum. I just set out there and then we have very specific uh, protocols to, for each one of those uh, uh, imbalances so we move to immune dysfunction this is a, a passion of mine having worked at a chronic lyme disease a referral center for several years and where i work uh, as a consultant now at brain forest our immune systems are completely overwhelmed and we do have tests now to help identify which parts are uh, most dysfunctional. Uh, we measure the Th1, Th2 pathways. Um, there are so many amazing supplements to improve immune function, uh, such as uh, transfer factors, colostrum, uh, of course, the vitamin Ds, etc. cetera. And uh, we... Uh, we spend quite a bit of energy now looking at this infectious disease burden that is uh, now felt to be you know, a very common reason for autism to Alzheimer's to depression. And uh, there's a common known 10 bad players, <laughs> so to speak. You know, there's the, the, of course, the Lyme disease, but uh, we do careful questionnaires to also identify Bartonella, Babesia, Mycoplasma, Ehrlichia, and uh, we, we'll find a, an amazing amount of people that they're, they're, we're losing the battle. The immune system is just not able to suppress these common bad pathogens. So there are herbal remedies that will address each one of those bad 10 players. And uh, we, you know, we will use those along with uh, an immune boosting formula. Uh, and again, amazing things happen. And finally, the inflammatory imbalances. Uh, Unchecked inflammation is now, of course, felt to be absolutely the reason for uh, Alzheimer's, uh, depression, irritable bowel, et cetera. And we have uh, ways to measure that. Uh, we measure things like the high sensitive C-reactive protein uh, and, um, uh, and other markers. And once we know how imbalanced that is, there are just phenomenal nutritional supplements such as turmeric, that uh, will help you know, balance this in inflammatory cycle. And once it's turned off, usually people do very well and they don't have to take supplements in massive doses forever, but we, we just address it 
right on the on at the beginning as 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 long as we address these other pillars as well things go very well i uh just a final comment on that uh, i work at a uh, as a consultant at rainforest centers in indianapolis and fishers area and uh, we do quantitative eeg brain mapping uh for autistic children depression ptsd concussions race car drivers even and we will identify down to a two millimeter voxels or cubes, uh, these little, where the electrical imbalances are in the brain. And there, uh, it's very rare to see anybody with a perfectly functioning brain right now. So we can see these areas on the quantitative EEG that are just bright red. And we call it, we jokingly call it the brain is on fire. So again, then we have to, you know, what, what our team does there is we, ask the question, well, why is the brain on fire? And, and usually it's, it's a leaky gut syndrome. Uh, there's also now this new recognized com, uh, thought of a leaky brain syndrome. You know, you've got this blood brain barrier with a little piece cloth like uh, matrix there that protects the brain, but it gets injured from all these inflammation uh, markers running around uh, just as the gut does. And now you've got a brain on fire. So we do biofeedback of course, which is tremendous for most clients after 20 sessions. But then we also ask them to go through this functional medicine matrix. And we will always find impaired detoxification and an infectious disease burden. So that's kind of the, a good summary, I think. So this is, uh, exciting times because as we're all challenged with stress and you know viral burdens, coronavirus, et cetera, and a multitude of symptoms that doctors can't quite figure out what's going on. There's never been a greater need for a health coach, and I think it's one of the best investments you can make is to uh, to find a trusted healthcare advocate. Yes, and I believe this is the, one of the best companies and when absolutely amazing training and really good caring uh, clinicians. And so over four to six visits in a year and some very uh, specific labs, much different than you would get from your regular primary care doctor. It, it, it's just amazing what the stories we could tell. And I'm, I'm sure, Loya, you could go on and on about all of your success stories. When people do invest in their health, they, and we do Zoom meetings and, uh, and uh, get to know our clients, always available when they need us, and uh, work it through. Yeah, this, this, this is one of our most important tests is to take a look at these food sensitivities. Uh, oh, and, oh, right. I didn't remember. This is the functional health report. I had, sorry, I had yeah. you put them out of order. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm sorry, it didn't come up very big on my screen there. Um, <laughs> the functional. Yeah, so this is an example of the Avexia diagnostics testing. And uh, you'll see a lot of markers here that are, um, you know, a, a normal doctor would get a report that says these are normal. Well, they're not optimal. And so we have uh, extensive training on, let's optimize that sodium uh, potassium balance, the B and creatinine. Let's find those food sensitivities, um, et cetera. And, and then uh, it's amazing the report that you, uh, the clients will receive, uh, multiple pages of suggestions and, uh, and a way to really personalize their, their healing plan. Yes, most people, when they think of allergies, they, you know, they're thinking about, you know, you, you sneeze when you're exposed to pollens, you know, a kid eats a peanut and it has a life-threatening reaction. That's the IgE-mediated uh, type of allergy. And, uh, you know, that's important to address in for some serious conditions. But that's a small part of your immune system. The largest part is your IgG immunoglobulin uh, load. And uh, so... Food sensitivities typically are, are best detected using the IgG immunoglobulin uh, food sensitivity report that we, we analyze. And uh, 
you know, it's always kind of sad because for myself, I found out my, one of my favorite foods at one point was cottage cheese and I was off the charts on my sensitivity to that. And stopping the cottage cheese, heartburn went away. Um, but we'll find uh, just unexpected uh, you know, eggs or dairy or, or gluten uh, many times, or it could be a really strange thing like blueberries. So the good news is you only have to eliminate most of the time uh, for these sensitive foods for about three months. And then you have a rotation diet where you're allowed to slowly reintroduce. And as long as you're fixing that leaky gut with your four R protocol I outlined earlier, uh, these problems all go away. And we will repeat these tests and sure enough, confirm with scientific validation that that problem has gone away. In case people can't read there, I, I really like this slide, Steve. So yeah. I just wanted to point out what the red, the highest sensitivities, it almost hits the five. Um, the wheat and the whole wheat and the gluten, you have rye. Um, down here, you have both the casein and the cow's milk. You have eggs here in the middle, peaches and pears, and I think that's a plum. But, you know, it really goes through the dairy, the grains, the fruits, um, all the vegetables, the beans, the spices. Down here, you have fish and meats and nuts, uh, extracts, microbes, fowl. You know, is it the chicken that shows up for people or, or duck? Seeds are selfish and hidden under here. I'm just trying to read this under my screen share is um, additives. Things that you are finding not only in food, but creams and different things. So there's 132 listed here. And after seeing a lot of our patients in, and my family and myself go through this, this has been extremely, extremely helpful. Yes, and what percent of the people have you found have the gluten sensitivity? Oh, and we, a lot. A lot, way more people, but we can actually detect that in their questionnaire as well. Um, True. Yeah. Yeah, I just finished reading that the book called The Grain Brain. Yes. Uh, and then there's another one, The Wheat Belly. So they, they believe that a lot of these cognitive problems and, and obesity are related to this, this gluten problem. Do you want to get into systemic diseases a little bit? Uh, the systemic diseases are, you know, it, it's all, it's a symphony. If, if you have a knee problem, it's not always just arthritis. It, it's probably because you had all these, uh, you know, inflammation coming from the leaky gut that have, have caused this cytokine storm and, and leading to that problem. So, you know, just an example of that, that gentleman holding his knee, there's, there's a couple of whole body collagen products that have been shown to grow back cartilage and proven under the microscope, you know, within three to four months. So people don't have to live with that kind of a problem with the current technology that we have in nutraceutical medicine. So uh, that also applies to, to the brains. And like you said, the, you know, let's just talk about the brain as maybe the final comment on that. Um, this whole new philosophy of neuroplasticity is just amazing. The brain can grow back new neurons, new pathways, if you provide it with the proper nutrition, uh, such as phosphatidylserine, ginkgo, uh, NAC, and, and some of the star players. So there's several supplements that are just profound in how they can help the, an aging brain uh, kind of, you know, re actually improve dramatically. So once again, we like to look for that root cause in, in functional medicine. You know, is it a heavy metal burden? Is, is it a toxic bowel? Is it adrenal exhaustion? Probably it, all of the above. And you know, the health coach helps navigate that long pathway of you know, those 10 common denominators of illness. Where do we start? And you, know, you can't most likely do all 10 common denominators at once. So that's where the health questionnaire helps. That's where the, the training helps that we, we help you navigate cautiously over, you know, six months to a year to, to work through these root causes.
obviously that people come in with a lot of uh, common concerns about their relatives, um, about themselves and their children. And uh, we're, we're there for them if they need advice on that with some of the previous things I mentioned. Steve, one thing I was thinking about with your common concerns, um, last night when we did the podcast and we were talking about stress, can you tell us, just comment on um, how many people come into the, the doctor's office right now and the actual underlying cause is stress? Yeah, I never thought about that and, and when I started in practice, but now the statistics are out and it is 75 to 90 percent of the common health conditions are in a large part related to stress. So doctors are great with sprained ankles and you know there is surgeries that are needed but uh, it is the stress that is causing this this problem so we must address that unbalanced sympathetic versus parasympathetic adrenal imbalance to to, to help people out with that so I think uh, that and then recognizing again that the, the, the gut is, is probably the most important thing in regards to your mental health so um, we, we, we have ways to modify the stress. Uh, and our health coaches are trained in uh, aromatherapy and, and yoga and, and various hot flower remedies that people can do to, to help address these and, and you know, have a, a high quality of life uh, for a long time if they, they use all these different modalities. And we have a lot of training and specialties from Functional Medicine University. Yeah, uh, you, you won't believe how many great podcasts that we've been able to listen to from, you know, the world thought leaders uh, from Functional Medicine University. Dr. O'Brien, who just finished that book, You Can Fix Your Brain, uh, spends a lot of time talking about the leaky brain syndrome. Um, there's experts that talk about immunity and what we can do to help get away from this COVID-19 problem. So I think I covered that a little bit earlier, Lori, that we, we really rec start with the health questionnaire and almost 90% of the time we already kind of know what's wrong just by looking at the answers and using our uh, specialized functional medicine university uh, grid and platform. But then we need these labs and, and these are very important. So once you have these very specific labs, the most comprehensive I've seen in functional medicine circles, uh, you know, it's very easy to, to put together a tailored program. Uh, for example, look, why is my T4 not getting to my happy T3? Well, it's probably an iodine deficiency. Uh, so many people have the B12 deficiency. Almost 90% of everybody you see has a vitamin D deficiency. So you don't want to just use cheap vitamin D, but you need to use the K2D, which um, helps make sure that you don't leach out calcium into your arteries, for example. Just, I'm just giving you some small examples of how tailored these, our supplement regimens are after you see these very, very excellent functional medicine labs. Yeah, I think we covered that, that we just need to look at all of the body as a symphony. And, uh, Mind, body, spirit. Right. Well, yeah, exactly. And uh, working on, there are so many ways to work on the mind. Uh, and there's, there's all kinds of brain training uh, videos and audio systems that we, we can recommend. Certainly positive self-talk, um, uh, spiritual training manuals. Those, those are a part that I probably didn't mention earlier that are just as important as some of the physiologic things that we talked about. I think I covered that pretty well, that we really need to address not just estrogen, testosterone, but also adrenals. You know, what we see uh, when people are already to that stage of the burned out and exhausted adrenal imbalance, they, they most likely will need DHEA or pregnenolone or, you know, a deeper dive uh, level of ashwagandha and deglycerated licorice, licorice root. So we'll, we'll uh, you know, balance that, that whole adrenal axis 
um, it's amazing how many people, unfortunately, we see that have um, pituitary hypothalamic hormone uh, deficiencies through our functional medicine testing. And, and if you go through their questionnaire and find out, oh, they lived in a moldy basement for half their life. Or, uh, and so we find these mold toxins uh, showing up and we, we actually do the mold testing as part of our functional medicine uh, you know, lab testing. And you'll see low levels of melanocyte stimulating hormone, which trickles down to uh, adrenal hormone problems, uh, fluid imbalances in the body, edema. So, um, you know, we start at the top. The air traffic control center is the pituitary and hypothalamus. And then we take a look at those adrenals. Um, almost so, I'd say probably 85% of the people have an iodine deficiency. So their thyroid, although it might look good on the labs, it's really not getting into the cells and doing what it's supposed to do. Um, and every cell in your body needs adequately functioning, a good T3. So we, we, we put people on these iodine uh, tyrosine supplements and, uh, and suddenly the, a lot of those low thyroid symptoms just disappear. You know, when you mentioned minerals, we also, we also do a different test since most of the minerals are not identified in the serum. We do a red blood cell or an RBC test, and that way we can identify toxicity and mineral deficiencies. That's a wonderful test. Well, that sure is, and that's not something that's covered on a routine physical with doctors. And, and you know, minerals are the conductors of electricity throughout your entire body. So if you don't have a right balance of that, things aren't going to you know, work optimally. Yeah. And, you know, if anybody has any questions, you can, we'll answer questions at the end. You can put them in the chat box and we'll open up the lines. But Yeah, I think we covered the, the whole problem about inflammation. That, uh, and inflammation a reason. Yeah, and inflammation we pick up um, very well in the health comprehensive health history questionnaire, and we also cover it in in our blood panels. So there's like 60 different things we analyze in the in the panel. And you hit on this really well. You basically all diseases start in the gut. Exactly. And, you know, I think we talked about it at the seminar yesterday. When we do that adrenal uh, test where we do the four-point adrenal hormone analysis using saliva testing, one of the interesting uh, things you get on that result is also is something called the secretory IgA level. You know, and that's your first line of defense is this important immunoglobulin in your nose, your eyes, your, your throat, and your upper uh, GI system. And we, we find so many times that that secretory IgA is burned out and low. And you know, that, that's not going to be good because that just sets the tone for dysbiosis, an opportunity for parasites to infiltrate. And so we use some, you know, some good supplements such as tegrosyl colostrum, uh, various immunoglobulins that uh, will restore you know, a very healthy gut matrix. Yeah, I'd say in the last two weeks, um, I would have seen 80% of the GI maps come back with, with low secretory IgA, IgG, IgA. IgA, yes, yes. Yeah. And, it, it, and that's what's great about this a, a GI map. I'm glad you reminded me to talk about that. Because the uh, a one stool test, uh, a, you know, one time specimen, just mailed in and you, you get a, an eight page report of the microbiome um, you know, map. So we'll see that, you know, it's very critical to have a good diversity of the microbiome and uh, we'll, we'll get reports and find so many times that there's an imbalance, you know, in the lactobacillus versus actinomyces versus you know, other bacilluses. So, uh, you know, there's so many probiotics you can take out there, but let's pick the one that you need. Yeah. And so the, G, the GI map is just a wonderful test. And it uses, you know, DNA detection techniques. If you go to your regular doctor and get a stool test, they're going to look for the obvious parasites under the microscope, but miss 99% of all the problems. So this GI map is, is critical. And they haven't had the training of what to do if certain um, microorganisms are there. They don't have the, um, 
technology to restore that and to eliminate that. Exactly. And, you know, we have on our team at Functional Medicine University, some of the world thought leaders and how do you balance the, the microbiome? There's wonderful podcasts we can refer clients to, to learn about that through companies like Designs for Health, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So uh, we, we do spend quite a bit of energy working on the gut health and that for our protocol. And there it is again. Uh, you, you must fix that gut. Uh, and once you get rid of that cytokine storm that's coming from uh, the unbalanced gut back lining, yeah, suddenly liver gets better, the thyroid gets better. They're saying that almost all these causes of Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which then leads to low thyroid functioning, is from gluten. That's one of the biggest theories. And you'll see in the stool testing, you know, evidence of an, a leaky gut with a test called the zonulin level or an inflammation called calprotectin. And, uh, and you know, those are easily reversed with the four-hour protocol. Yeah, I think I covered detoxification fairly well. How, you know, we must address both phase one, which pulls the toxins out, and then phase two, which packages them up, sends them through the bile. Uh, we see a lot of these patients with mold uh, have, having problems. So we tend to use binders like alginate and uh, various other supplements to help uh, reverse the reabsorption of these mold toxins as we eliminate them. Um, so um, usually a good three months detox. Yeah, you know, there's uh, so many studies now too that you can just do uh, like a neutral clear from biotics protocol and people's symptom complexes of their misery index so to speak is, is goes down by 50 percent by just waking up the liver and helping to eliminate uh, a lot of these toxins so a lot of times we might recommend kind of an aggressive you know, two shakes a day a packet of, of supplements per day and one healthy meal uh, you know an aggressive uh, neutral clear cleanse so to speak and uh, if you can get a 50 percent reduction in your misery index i'd say that's a that's a win <laughs> yeah and then you can keep working after that and often those 50 percent we have seen anyway we can get that often in a month but certainly within three months it's it's amazing sometimes we have people get 50 percent reduction in their signs and symptoms in as little as two weeks it just depends on the person um, what there's, how they're feeling, what the underlying cause is, and how well they stick to the program. Yes, a calm mind, of course, comes from, you know, careful meditative thought, starting your day with saying it's going to be a great day. You know, all of those things we teach the clients. Um, we, we do uh, have the option to do a lot of this methyl genetic uh, nutrition analysis, you know, a $300 saliva test goes a long way when you get a 30 page report of which gene uh, SNPs you have. A SNP is called a single nucleotide polymorphism, where either mom or dad gave you maybe a little weak gene from their heritage. And uh, we find all the time, especially in the autistic children and uh, anxiety patients, a tendency to have elevated. Uh, glutamate, which is a neuroexcitotoxin, and the body doesn't have the genetic makeup to convert that to the calming GABA. And so it, once we find that, there are very specific hydroxy B12, adeno B12, certain supplements that help that gene behave better and produce the calming GABA. Um, so we, we always joke that, you know, people who come in with uh, depression and anxiety, it's, it's not a Prozac deficiency. <laughs> It's a need for 5-HTP most likely because of the, either genetics or you know toxin environment. If you have ADD, is, is it an Adderall deficiency? I don't think so. It's probably a need for tyrosine and some other of the B6 and B12s. So it is possible to, to really help people's mental health with uh, looking at their genetics, fixing that leaky uh, brain barrier with uh, the protocols that we have and uh, Again, like you said, maybe one to three months, it, it's life-changing many times. You also have the 
the processed foods that are so full of the exotoxins, excitotoxins, sorry. Yes, and that's where Dr. Sintesi's food course comes in handy. I, I've learned more about food recently from him than I, I ever did, knew about, about how you eat the rainbow of colors. And, you know, yeah. organic mm -hmm. food is important. And, you know, you, you can actually enjoy food immensely, uh, carefully prepared with the rainbow of colors, to, you know, wonderful taste, and stay away from those processed foods. Don't go in the middle of the grocery stay on the outside aisles in the organic section. And, uh, you know, it's amazing that that affects your mood so much, even sometimes more than all the supplements we try. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that again. So the supplements are the nutraceuticals or botanicals. What we recommend is going to work on the imbalances and the root cause. But once we start to balance that, this is a food program. This is, let's get back to living on food and not have the need for supplements. It's a short-term fix, correct, Steve? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, once you have a client start resonating with that thought and, and eating really well, feeling great, and then they'll go and to a birthday party and have a cake or swing by McDonald's because they're in a hurry and they feel terrible you know, the next half a day, they learn real quick, wow, food is important. Let food be my medicine, as Hippocrates says. <laughs> very, very true. Well, these are exciting times. We, we have so much new technology that I would have never imagined was available, you know, when I graduated from medical school. Uh, we have all kinds of new literature about the importance of this rainbow of colors uh, diet and organic and staying away from toxins and, and uh, we have abilities to measure the imbalances now with these advanced labs so i think it's important people take advantage of that uh, join the holistic nutrition health coach program and nothing but good will come out of that i'm proud of you for making the switch and seeing the light i i would love <laughs> I would love to see more MDs recognized. I, I, I think there's a lot of MDs that probably aren't satisfied either with, write, with um, just writing prescriptions and not truly understanding why people are not healing and why they have, you know, separate complications. So I'm, you know, thank you. That's true. Yeah. yeah. It's really exciting. You know, I've been a member of the Integrative College of Integrative Medicine, uh, which is kind of a specialized group of invite only doctors uh, you go to a couple conferences a year and all network together this is where you hang out with the doctors that write the books you know like the yeast connection or dr fry's protomixo discovery you know you can have lunch with you know these thought leaders that write the books and uh, we're seeing more and more doctors just clamoring to get into the, these conferences because they, they recognize the same things i just commented on earlier the patients really aren't getting that much better with their prescriptions and there's so much going on that they, they want to learn. So it, it's coming around. You, you'll see more and more doctors converting into a, you know, a concierge functional medicine platform over time. Excuse me. And I was just taking a drink of water. <coughs> Steve, yeah. the other comment is when you go to the regular doctor, you're lucky if you get six or seven minutes, right? On your appointment. Otherwise, with a coach, you're going to get an hour and a half, 60 minutes. You know, it's, it's a huge difference. <laughs> yes, and, and the doctors probably don't like, you know, being forced to see 25 to 30 patients a day either. But it's just the reality of economics of healthcare today. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they can accomplish a lot of good in that short time. But, you know, the, what we've described today, uh, these 10 common denominators of illness, you're right, it, it takes a 90 minute health coach visit to really work through this. It does. Give the right advice. Mm -hmm. Well, Lori, I don't know if you use this opportunity to talk about the pricing and all that, but the bottom line is, this is an investment in your health. It's invaluable. And, uh, you know, with the, today's healthcare, the healthcare deductible is so high that, uh, you know, you, you're gonna probably end up spending money on, on illnesses and aches and pains that if you would have maybe just invested that in your health coaching 
and some of these things we've discussed, it probably would have really helped your bottom line in life a lot better. That is so true. Sorry. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Steve. And I think thank I have you. one more slide here that shows. So if you're ready to finally feel better, you can please go to our website and you can book a free discovery consultation. You just go to holisticnutrition.com and I'd love to open this up for any Q&As. If there's anybody who would like to um, put anything in the chat or turn your mute, your um, take your mute off. I know Dr. Santisi would probably love to say a few things. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Steve, about all your presentation was inspiring, uh, especially with people that the uh, They've been in, uh, you know, prescriptions, and then people they don't understand the underlying cause, and uh, this is very happy day to see an MD understanding the functional medicine process. And then I was always pushing to have, uh, you know, functional medicine as a part of the curriculum in medical school. So we still have some politics back in there, but uh, you know, we all keep hoping and praying for that to happen. Great comment. It's so inspiring to see that the Cleveland Clinic actually has started a functional medicine training residency. I know you, you've been involved in that and worked with Dr. Hyman there. So over I time, have, yeah. yeah. So this is a one of the model of the uh, hospitals that I adore, I love. Uh, it's all combined between, you know, uh, the function medicine and then the uh, convention medicine, uh, which we don't have anything wrong with it. We like to help people. If you have somebody with diabetes, uh, you are not going to tell them stop your insulin. You encourage them to see a function medicine or follow your function medicine program while they are taking their insulin because this is the only solution. So uh, all the medication that they are out there, uh, I think they are uh, there for a reason. If uh, people, they are sick and then their life depends to it, we don't uh, stop them to do so. Uh, the good thing we do is to put them in a program to not need them uh, in the future. That's true, Steve. That yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. We always encourage people to stay uh, on a regular connection with their primary care doctors, and uh, you know, and you know, what's funny is how many primary care doctors will almost wonder, like, what what have you done, client, that has improved you so much? You know, that your insulin levels of or, or, or needs are going way down. Uh, I used to see many times that people would send in a, a doctor, maybe a little bit. Uh, strict still in traditional medicine, but he'd send his wife and kids in to the functional medicine clinic because uh, they I, didn't know, work. I know. I have <laughs> I have myself a lot of MD doctors, patients, and then I work with them. Just, uh, you know, the system, how they work, they get so embarrassed to say, okay, well, I am holistic. They don't understand holistic. It's just uh, the solution, not the diagnostics which our functional medicine uh, a, a diagnostics, it's more advanced than a convention medicine. And this is the topic of your the webinar today, the difference between functional medicine and then convention medicine. And as uh, Lori earlier mentioned uh, about, you know, if you have magnesium deficiency come from serum test, doesn't mean nothing because uh, where the magnesium should be, it's in the red cell, uh, also A1C for uh, diabetes. When we run a red uh, cell storage of the glucose instead a insulin uh, test, uh, same thing in a ferritin, uh, which the storage of our iron uh, versus the iron measurement through the serum. So. I think, and then I am very confident that in function medicine diagnostics, it's more advanced than the convention medicine uh, uh, testing. 
what you think, uh, Steve? So, because yes. Dr. Steve, you've been a medical doctor for 30 years. Uh, you know, my specialty is only functional medicine, but I've been interacted with a lot of MD doctors, and then I love what, uh, you know, what everybody does. At the end of the day, we all help uh, patients, right? Yes. Uh, I, when we all started this movement 15 years ago, they called it alternative medicine, which made it sound like, you know, it was kind of strange medicine or off the charts, you know, strange. But now this functional medicine is a much better term because we do do a deeper dive uh, into things. I, I remember when I was in, you know, very kind of a strict HMO network and a migraine patient came in uh, and of course none of the medicines were working, the side effects for the preventions were bad. And, and I ordered a stool test. Uh, and, and I got a call from one of our medical directors like, uh, doctor, are you, are you crazy? It's a headache. It's a, it's a brain problem. It's like, no, I did the stool test and sure enough, we found a parasite, you know, gluten sensitivity markers off the charts and the protocol worked, the patient's fine. But boy, it, it set up red flags 15 years ago um, in, in a really traditional setting. So, you know, many doctors that work in these hospital groups are just kind of afraid to go, to go this route. So all the more reason for patients to take charge of their own health and you know, be their own healthcare advocate. Absolutely, especially the doctors. Uh, they don't have that much uh, training in functional medicine. Always, they are lost, and then they see only the symptom. Uh, but uh, if you see all this coronavirus, and then how to treat them with the ventilations, and then uh, why they don't think about the oxygen in blood cell that it's not transporting enough oxygen to the lungs. Why we are not. Uh, watching for uh, cytokine, uh, why we are not watching for a uh, dysbiosis, why we are not uh, investigating heavy metals, why we are not, and this is, uh, you know, a quite a uh, challenge to talk to somebody and tell them, hey, uh, probably I may help you better than any uh, uh, health provider out there, because this is the process, we spend more time with people, uh, we have uh, advanced technology in testing, DNA, uh, IgG, sensitivity uh, tests, uh, RBC with uh, heavy metals, and the list goes on. We have also a lot of uh, tests uh, that you can just swab uh, your saliva and then see if you have dysbiosis or uh, H. pylori or uh, any kind of candida or any kind of actually uh, bacteria overgrowth that uh, you know other doctors they don't pay attention to it because they cover only they covered only the symptoms and then they leave this uh, you know problem grow 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 until you have uh, people with uh, a lot of prescriptions and then this is very sad our population in america are over medicated my friend uh, dr steve Right. They may serve a purpose as a band-aid, so to speak, but uh, so many side effects. You know, isn't it like the fourth leading cause of, of death is, is medication side effects in America? It's somewhere up there in the, in the top 10. So there's always a risk with uh, using prescriptions, but you know, they have their place. But let's start at the root cause uh, level for most people. Yeah, Wait, that's, uh, go ahead, uh, go ahead, my friend. <laughs> comment I was going to make was our traditional medicine has been fantastic for emergencies. I mean, I'm so happy our emergency. Yes. <laughs> emergency medicine, I can, I, can, I can call it emergency medicine. And uh, <laughs> if somebody asks me uh, what, uh, you know, what the solution is, when I have a patient go to a prescription that means an alarm it's an emergency to do something about it if you still having a high blood pressure and then you taking a medication you are calling for a heart disease and then you are going to call for a stress and then and then you know yesterday we spoke about stress for probably one hour and a half and then how much stress uh, impact all the organs and the uh, nervous system and then how stress is the underlying cause of 
probably all diseases, including diabetes. So when you are stressed, you got fight flight, you got all this uh, uh, glucose and fat dropped in your bloodstream very quick. So we have an abnormal uh, reactions happening in the body while you have stress. And then, you know, uh, instead to get to the stressors and then help those patients with the uh, uh, how you can eliminate stressors and then of course diet or can can be too many things can be anything actually but you have to stop the injuries by giving medications and then stop seeing the brain as an isolated organ uh, you see the gut matrix, which the second brain, basically all the food needs in the brain actually made in the gut. Go ahead. Yeah, that's great to reemphasize that, that the 75, 80% of our happy neurotransmitters come from that gut associated lymphoid tissue area of the gut. So uh, we pay a lot of attention to that. And just a final comment uh, I thought of is, you know, we work on our clients and they begin to feel remarkably better. Their stress goes down. Well, there's a downstream benefit of that to the family, to the coworkers. And, uh, you know, you, I get to hear those stories a lot where a spouse will come in and say, thank you. Absolutely. It can be also relationships, uh, jobs, issues. Uh, you know, when you don't love what you do, uh, it's a hard, it's stressful. It's why always you... You know, you work in a field, what you love to do, uh, what kind of people you want to hang out with. Uh, that's, it's, uh, it helps a lot. And uh, this is the part of coaching and training that we are offering to our team. And uh, I cannot thank you enough, uh, Dr. Steve, for your presentation. And uh, thank you so much for being a, a part of our team. And uh, thank you for everyone who attend this webinar. Thank you, Lori, for your presentation and uh, for your hard work uh, to prep uh, and train and uh, all that. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, I will open the question for any of the audience uh, with us if they have some questions. We are all here, three of us, to answer the questions that we may have.